Great. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is a meeting of the steering committee of the Vermont Climate Council. We've got four of you here. Um, so if you all would like to get going, um, you have a quorum to do so, and I'll follow your lead. Are folks comfortable getting going? Yeah? Okay. Great. Um, we have a very straightforward agenda today, and that is to look at um, to look at uh, next week's council meeting. Um, <clears throat> this is what I see here, um, where we do need to approve some minutes, um, and then we're just going to go through this council agenda. We're going to do some public comment, and all this may take less time. Um, so if we do it quicker, fantastic. Um, good morning, Kristen. Just saw you jump in. Um, okay, so that's what our agenda is. Um, anything about that agenda you want to mention before we jump dive into it? Anything? Okay, great. So we have some minutes. They're linked in that, here, I'll drop this in the chat for everybody as well, so you have it handy. Minutes from our last meeting are linked in there. People wanna just take a second and look at those, and then we can approve them. Does anybody need a little more time to look at those or have any concerns about them? No. including those who are off camera because they can't see your head <laughs> making motion. <laughs> All right. Um, any concerns about the minutes? Great. Let's treat those as, a, as approved. Thanks very much. All right. So let's look at the agenda for next week's meeting. This is a pretty significant agenda. <laughs> so let's walk through it. And um, I can share it on my screen. Just give me one sec here. So this agenda reflects the last time we spoke. Remember we walked through it um, and I took notes, they're in those minutes. And from those notes, we did this agenda. There's a couple of things I wanna flag as we walk through this. And then let's, let's have a discussion about how we can make sure this is set up for success. One thing you'll note is we've added a half hour to it. So it starts at 10.30 and ends at two, right? So it has an extra half hour um, to do the things we need to do. So that's one thing I wanted to flag. Um, another thing I want to flag is that all of the materials that we'll be talking about will get posted up in the coming days. And I can flag right now what I know. And Marion, you can correct me if there's some things that aren't correct, aren't correct. The revised biomass recommendations are ready to go and they'll get posted today. Um, so they'll be part of this agenda. So counselors will have all week uh, to be looking at those. I'm just going really quickly through right now. Um, council work planning doesn't really need a, a document, but we could post something, I guess. The resilience priorities, um, they reached an agreement at the subcommittee level on Friday. And those can, uh, Marion's cleaning up those, that document and can post it, I believe, Marion later today. So folks will have a week to look at those. The legislative report is not going to get posted until Thursday, um, but will get posted. And then the transportation recommendations, there's a subcommittee meeting tomorrow and they'll post what comes out of that. Um, so those sort of read aheads will be ready at differing times, some today, others tomorrow, and then the report on Thursday. Um, and I'll note the both the resilience priorities in the legislative report are sort of first looks at them, and then we'll meet in early January to make a decision on them. Okay, so that was just a quick note on materials. Would it be helpful for me to go item by item through this and we can just look at this? Yeah, okay. Let's do it. 
Um, we wanted to make sure we do a welcome to new counselors. We do have some new counselors and spend just a moment to recognize that and have folks introduce themselves. Um, for just transition reflection, uh, we're kind of doing a mashup here that's okay. Um, you all had suggested you do want sort of climate action office updates at each meeting. Um, and you, we could do that in this slot with an emphasis on community engagement. Um, if we look overall at this agenda and that's looking a little tight, then maybe we push this to January and just do something around engagement um, that's a little shorter. Um, let's talk about that in the bigger picture of this. So we have that reflection, which would really be the Climate Action Office update with a focus on some of the engagement stuff that's happening. Then we invest time in the biomass recommendations. The way we have it structured right now is an initial half hour to review what the writing group has done um, and have some discussion around that. And then time for public comment. You'll notice I put in a half hour for public comment, not because we need to use that full amount of time. It's just to be ready for what could be some significant amount of public comment. Uh, so after our initial discussion, some public comment, and then a revise, excuse me, uh, coming back and having additional discussion. Um, and then here I wanted to try to do a more structured process. If any counselors felt really compelled that they'd want to see any changes to the document that the writing group's proposing, then we need to have a, a process to look at those changes um, and, and make a decision on those. And then once you've, we've figured that out, have a more formal decision around the entire package. And for that, I've budgeted a half hour, which may be, it's hard to know if that's going to be enough or not enough. So that from, from biomass, we'll have a quick hit, just 10 minutes looking out across 2024 in the meetings that we've talked about and what we expect to have happen. Um, and that's a very sort of initial look. Um, then uh, what do we have here? 25 minutes to go through what the Rural Resilience Habitation Subcommittee has been working on in the response to the letter. Again, it's a first look and a decision will be in January. Same thing, first look with a decision in January in the legislative report that Jane's preparing on behalf of the council. And there we're doing 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes for a first look. Uh, and then we will have transportation recommendations coming out of cross sector. And there we've put in um, 20 minutes. Um, again, first look decision in January. The last thing we have here is um, a very modest change to the governance document. Ah, I got to post this too, um, to clarify the process for su selecting subcommittee co-chairs. We talked about this previously. Um, that was just a five minute thing. Another round of public comment and close. Okay. It's a little much for 8.30 in the morning right now to just walk through all that. Let me just pause to say, when folks look at this agenda, how are you feeling about it? Is it reflecting what you wanted to have happen? Are we setting ourselves up for success? What do we think? I'm going to drop the slides for a second. I'll put them back up when you need them. Or them. Reactions to the agenda, Liz? I think it looks good overall. Um, I mean, given the amount of topics that we need to hit, um, two comments. One is I would on the uh, climate office update do that in some substantive way using that uh, uh, transition period in the just reflections moment if necessary, because I just recall that counselors more than once now, I feel like at more than one meeting have noted that they feel it's really important to get that climate office update. and. Yep. Uh, yeah, for those that aren't, you know, working directly with the state all the time, I think that information is really important. So I would, I would prioritize that if possible. On biomass, my comment is just that, you know, wait, right now you have 30 minutes, public comment, 30 minutes. It feels like 
we should potentially be responsive and, and reflective of, you know, how that discussion goes. It may be appropriate, for example, to have the public come in earlier and have more time for the, I, I don't know, but it feels a little bit funny to do kind of 30 and 30, given the number of things we got to go through there. Yeah. So I, be, I would just be open to that. And if you, your instinct there, Liz, just so I'm clear, because I think the way I have it now would be a 30 minutes of initial conversation by the council, 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes public comment, and then another 30 minutes to close it out and make decision. If you were to think what, if you would want to make some friendly amendments to that, which way would you, would you change that? My instinct is that it may be important to have more of the discussion on edits, et cetera, occur after hearing from the public. Um, in other words, yep. yeah, I'm a little bit worried that a half an hour just for intro and then public comments is going to make it uh, squished on the edit end, but I could be wrong. I, again, right. I, would, I would just be more responsive to how much discussion is happening and willing to kind of flip that around if needed, timing-wise. Nice. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Secretary Moore? I was just, I, I am concerned that this is a really aggressive agenda uh, and think we should have a plan up front as to how we're going to deal with it if things run over. I know personally I'm constrained on the back end and so can't stay past the allotted time. Um, but I, I, I think we may need to be prepared to table something until January if we're unable to, to, get to all of the items because it is a really significant agenda. Thanks, Julie. If thinking about the items that we have there, are there logical things where it'd be easier to table it in your mind? That, that's tough. I mean, I, I am reluctant to take the climate office update, for example, and work planning off the table. And I recognize those are also modest amounts of minutes, but I think at a minimum pushing some of the less, um, what, I, what I'm sure others will feel are time sensitive manners towards the end of the agenda might be a, a starting place and, and make sure that we're working through the agenda in sort of priority order. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Bram? So um, just a couple quick thoughts and um, questions. I agree with Secretary Moore. Um, you know, I think biomass and transportation are kind of the most important pieces. You know, if we get nothing else done but those, it'll be a successful meeting. Um, you know, recognizing the importance absolutely of, of all the other pieces. But I think as Secretary Moore said, the time sensitivity relative to um, council first look and then council approval at a, a subsequent meeting. Um, and it's occurring to me as I look at this, that the biomass writing group um, within itself needs to choose, probably choose someone to present the work um, which I don't think we've done. That has happened without me knowing. That's excellent. Has not um, happened yet, Bram. That's a good point. And lastly, and, and I'm sorry if this is somewhere in our materials and I missed it, but do we have a definition of resilience? Open question for everybody. Oh, that's a good question. Um, can you say one more word why you're asking that question, Bram? on the definition of resilience? No, <laughs> I cannot do it in one word. Um, but uh, yeah, well, it, you know, it seems to me if, if uh, we are addressing, I mean, in general, we have a mandate to address rural resilience. And uh, I think Speaker Krowinski has raised specific urgent questions around resilience. And, uh, and I think we, I mean, I certainly have a feeling for what that means in some sense, but it seems to me it would be helpful to us 
if we defined what it is we are trying to achieve. Got it. I bet um, Marion can be helpful with that, particularly, you know, and and others from the folks from this. And Marion isn't necessarily for right now, but just if you want to just say a word to Bram about does does such a thing exist, like a clear definition, so we all know what we're talking about when we're putting that out there. Yeah, I think there's a bigger answer to that, but we'll just say the Global Warming Solutions Act defines resilience. Um, so I can put that definition in the chat. And I think for the purposes of the council, that's a good definition to work off of. Nice. Thanks, Mary. Super. Okay. Um, Secretary Clouser. Thanks, David. I think um, Julie may have covered that. I My major concerns, and since her discussion, I have been looking at things we could cut out. I, I am very concerned <laughs> that we're not going to have ample time um, for even maybe half of this agenda because it is so robust. Um, the only things I can think to kind of condense and cut out are, you know, things that are on the agenda for five minutes. So I'm not sure I'm saving anyone a lot of time. I think some of the like work plans, those those types of things, maybe we just get out ahead of time and reference them in the meeting instead of actually having, you know, a specific um, discussion of those things. All that being said, I think I have managed to save us eight minutes on the agenda, which I'm not sure is <laughs> all that helpful. Um, I, I just, you know, if we're, if we are presenting things as a first look, like transportation, for example, I just think we need to really drive in. This is a, this is a first look and, um, a, you know, really condense both the presentation and the question time. Um, I, I just don't know. I, I have time constraints as well, both on the front end and on the back end. So I just continue to get concerned about how much we're trying to cram in to the agenda. And we just as a body have trouble, um, <laughs> have trouble staying to our allotted time because there's always kind of robust discussion and opinions and that's a good thing. But um, when I'm looking at this type of agenda, I, I don't know how we get through half of it. Yeah, that's a, a sobering thought. Um, I I guess what I'm hearing as well is <clears throat> there isn't there is not the option to just simply extend the meeting past its time that it ends because we're going to lose a lot of people. So we will be forced to to say we're going to have to pick this back up in January. So I want folks to be comfortable that that that's a reality that we may face. Kelly? Uh, yeah, I, I trying to think how best to do this. I was pleased to see that the biomass portion was fr at front of the agenda so that if things run long, that's still, the, I think that's the biggest thing that we have to tackle and we have to deal with it. Whereas the other ones, it looks like there's the opportunity to either. And what I would opt for would just to be like, and now, you know, we're at time and in adjusting it, maybe shrinking the amount of time for some of those first look things, if biomass runs over. Um, but it is like, I think just so if we're really clear, like we can, we can come back to this. This is not the end of this conversation. There's plenty of time to go back and, and, you know, uh, finish this conversation later on. So if we can keep them each to that, um, I don't fully know how much there will be to talk about with the transportation and the uh, uh, resilience sections. So, cause I don't really know what those are going to look like. Those ones seem like they're a little bit more meaty, but at the same time, it's a first look. So I think we can just be really <laughs> careful. And then I think we discussed this also, like keeping the public comment sections, making sure that each public member of the public sticks to a time also, I think yeah. would be really helpful so that everyone has a chance to share their, their thoughts. So 
I don't feel, I feel okay about it. I think we just need to be really good about not letting the meeting run over. Um, and I'm okay with pushing certain things up down the road or more, I think I would, I would opt for saying, okay, time limit, next topic, and push, going through the agenda that way, just so we all have a chance to look at each of the components after the biomass is done. If the biomass thing takes the entire meeting, that would be the concern, I suppose. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to cross that bridge. Hopefully, I there's a lot of time allotted for it, so hopefully we can um, we can work through it in that amount of time. Great. Okay. I also would say uh, keeping the public comment to the time, like the start time that we say on each of the sections, I think that's really important. We've heard feedback that if you push back the, the start of public comment, people have, like put time in their day to come to this meeting and then it, if they don't have the opportunity to speak and they have to leave, it's like, not that's not nice. So I would, that would be the other thing. Right. Once, once we post this, they stick to that. Yeah. And, and Kelly, I think, thank you for saying about also maintaining time limits and public comment. And yeah, we've been a little, I've been a little loosey goosey in the past. And I think this will be a meeting in which we can set a very clear expectation and, and hold people to that. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that, uh, Julie, that's an old hand or is that a new hand that you have up? I think we lost Secretary Moore. Old hand, for Old sure. Hand. Sorry. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, Bram? You know, having uh, been part of both of the transportation and the biomass working groups, I will uh, commit to working with whoever each group decides to present that work to keep the presentation very short and focused on the important things. Super. Okay, thanks. And I see a hand from David Dean. David, do you have something you want to chime in here with? Well, I wanted to make sure that when you get to public comment, you, I was at least called on. But okay, if, great. It will, if it will fit now, that's fine. Um, hang on just one second, David, and I'll um, and I'll circle back. I just want to make sure I'm capturing what what you all are saying in the steering committee. What I'm hearing you say is a we can't run over in this meeting. Um, B uh, the biomass piece, because that's the most sort of decisional, is the most important thing. Uh, C, uh, we need to be uh, on on things that are a first read. We can be pretty uh, uh, strict on time. Um, and D, uh, public comment needs to be well managed. And once we put in the agenda the time, let's start at that time uh what else and we'll just have to push things to january uh that we don't get to next monday is that pretty much the right summary cameron's taking better notes than i am right now which is thank goodness but that's uh that's what i i've got okay all right that's good um thanks julie so yeah abram you brought a good point up about someone from the writing, from the biomass writing group, maybe I can do a little email chain to make that happen. Although most of you are on this call right now, <laughs> right? Not all of you. Um, so if one of you wants to volunteer for that, please let me know. <clears throat> um, Our nomination is in order. Yeah, jump in, David, please. Bram, please, if you would. You, you've been volunteered, Bram. How does that feel? You know, that whole thing about working with whoever's going to present to keep it short and sweet, that's hard if it's me. <laughs> <laughs> However, I will, uh, I will, I will, yes, happily do that. Um, and and thank you, David. Uh, I, I actually appreciate being asked to speak for the group. So I will, um, try to carry out that duty competently. Bram, and I can help by flashing up on the screen the notes from the last council meeting, the ones that the, the writing group used, right? Just say, hey, these are the notes that we used and here's the public comment that we captured last time. And 
Um, and then you can speak to some, whatever, how you want to speak to the changes in the document. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Super. And David Dean, did you have another comment you want to make? Um, yes, too. Um, uh, and this has already been touched on, but I'll repeat again uh, that there should be a time limit uh, that's understood up front in terms of public participation around a question in front of the group. Um, do it all the time in both the legislative and executive branches of government. Uh, and it is not being disrespectful or unfair uh, to put a limit when you have a public body that needs to make a decision. Um, and I want to uh, uh, highlight, I think that it is important, maybe vital, that we respond to the speaker and reach that decision at this meeting. December 18th, we have already passed the introduction deadline, I believe, for bills in the Senate. And we are fast approaching the deadline for introduction of bills in the House. And uh, the speaker, as I understand her query to us, is trying to build an agenda for legislative action to support the work of uh, this uh, council. And um, so consequently, if we were not to deal with it on the 18th, we would be well into the second or third week of the legislative session before we actually got something to the speaker. And I would argue that that is too late for introduction and action this session. So I... Um, I, you know, I know the importance of transportation, largest source of carbon, et cetera, but we are in the weakest position in terms of having created any kind of consensus around a transportation policy that I'm aware of. I, that may not be accurate, but that's what I'm aware of. Um, and so I think it's much more important to respond to the speaker uh, at this meeting than deal with transportation uh, other than to give it a passing hello and we'll see you next month. Thanks, um, David. Um, Graham, you got your hand up and then I'll say something about our the, our, the governance doc, yeah. Thanks. Uh, so, David and everyone, I just wanted to let uh, anyone who has not heard, the Transportation Working Group has reached consensus on a set of recommendations for cross-sector. Um, and the hope is that cross-sector uh, will approve and support those recommendations before the council meeting so that they can be presented to the council for a first look uh, then. And I think there is, um, you know, similar, similarly to uh, David's concern about resilience, there there is a kind of legislative timeline component to moving the transportation work uh, forward. Thanks, Bram. What I was going to say is, if the way your governance docs re reads is when we have something of substance, as opposed to like something that's more processy. Um, your intent is to to do two looks at it, right? One one look to wrap your head around the content, ask some questions, provide some feedback, and then a second look to make a decision. And on this case, we're trying to we scheduled up a meeting in early January to uh, so there wouldn't be a big lag time on those two things. So it just would be it would be different than what you have in your process document if you were to look at something for the first time on Monday and then make a decision on it in an area of substance. So I'd want to have you all as a steering committee comfortable with with that approach if if you you know as if you as you listen to David and David Dean's concerns about timing. Just as a quick check in with the steering committee, it are, are you comfortable 
doing a first read of the resilience thing and transportation thing next week, and then a, a decision making in early January, um, even despite what David's putting out there? Would you want to make it do something different? You know, I, oh, sorry, Liz has her hand up. Go ahead, Liz. Yeah. And then Bram. You know, it, I guess it's going to depend on the draft that we see. I'd be open uh, if there was wide consensus on the draft to having agreement that we move it forward without uh, uh, formal, without waiting through the formal process. But it's difficult, you know, without seeing it. I agree with David Dean that from a timing point of view, that would be a better outcome if possible. But without seeing the document, it's hard to it's hard to forego that process without um, having reviewed the document. Thanks, Liz. That's helpful. Julie? I would just add, I think it's not just us reviewing the document, but it's hearing what kind of feedback we get from the public. And part of the reason for that two-step process is to give us space to contemplate their feedback as well. Um, and so, you know, really hard to commit to that, I think, uh, absent the conversation that'll take place at the council. Okay. Bram, did you want to add something else on that? No? Okay. All right. So just to be clear, what I'm hearing is, yes, <laughs> it would be great um, to be, give, be giving signals to the legislature earlier this month. Um, and there's at least two reasons why you need to be open to the fact that it's going to be a two-step process. One is you haven't seen the document yet, so it's hard to know if the council needs some deliberation time. And two, it may be important to give the public some deliberation time. Are you all comfortable on next week when you're looking at this document, making that decision in real time? Is that comfortable for you to like put up that possibility of, hey, actually, it looks like everybody loves this. Can we just make an agreement on it right now? Is that, are you comfortable doing that? Are you uncomfortable doing it because of what Secretary, Secretary Moore just said? Julie, go ahead. I think at a minimum, we need to explicitly note that that's a possibility on the agenda so that if people have, the members of the public have concerns, that they understand that this the intention may be to move these documents forward without a second sort of um, opportunity to provide input and feedback. And it also argues for having public comment, that last little bit of public comment before we make those decisions, right? Agreed. Okay. Bram? You know, it, it seems to me that if we do that, it will, you know, I mean, sort of this general sense that, you know, if we, if everyone looks at it and there's kind of general consensus, then it's okay. Um, I think that has to, to some extent include the public, which means we'll be in the position of judging in real time whether comments from the public are substantive and worthy of a couple of weeks of reflection to address them or not, which feels uncomfortable to me. Mm. Okay, Kelly. Yeah, I understand the feeling of urgency, but I also, uh, I I feel uncomfortable with the idea of saying, well, we might just approve these right away. Uh, I, that also doesn't really sit well with me. Um, one option that came to mind would be, I'm not sure when our next steering committee meeting would be between the December meeting and the January meeting, but if that, if people felt comfortable saying, hey, you know, we these are really time sensitive for the legislature. Seems like we have a lot of a lot of consensus, but we want to have some time to digest the public comment. Da, 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 da. We'll come to the steering committee meeting and we can, and you know, if everyone's comfortable with the steering committee sort of doing the final approval, I don't know if that would be more comfortable for folks. Um, and I haven't found on my calendar when the next steering committee meeting would be, but if that might help. I haven't, I don't have that handy either. I get a little bit nervous thinking about you all as a steering committee, like playing those kinds of roles of substantive. I feel like the council is the place for that. So it makes me a little nervous, Kelly, but I, I hear you as trying to find a solution. 
Yeah, I was like yeah. the one thing that I could think of that would maybe split the difference, but it would again, it would have to be if it was everyone was sort of like, yeah, this is great, go for it. You know that there there wasn't a lot of discussion around these things, but I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. Again, not yeah. having seen them. I have an idea. First to Secretary Clauser. Yeah, I, I just, I reiterate, I think that's outside of the steering committee's lane and charge. And I think it, uh, appreciating um, folks wanting to find a path forward, but I, I'm not sure that's it unless there was some sort of um, vote and pro, right? Like we'd have to have some process at the, um, of the full committee first. I think Frankly, for both options, we need if we're going to push something through outside of our stated process and our process documents, I think we'd have to vote on that um, as a full body. And now we start getting into additional time and and discussion and decision points. So I'm, I know I'm. It feels like I'm just putting up hurdles and no pathways but those are my two concerns yeah no I, super valid I, can i make a suggestion here which is if the legislature is looking for signals it is a very clear signal if in a discussion of this at the climate council next week there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of agreement around it, even as you as a counselor are going to respect your process of having this two-step thing and you're not going to formally vote on it until January. But if I'm a legislature, I'll be looking at that conversation and seeing how it goes. And that maybe is enough signal to address what David Dean's issues are uh, and concerns are. So I'll just put that out there. Like it's a signal the way you talk about it. Uh, I talk about these things next week, even if the formal vote is in January. I'm not sure if that feels like the best way forward, but I put it forward as one where you can do what Secretary Klaus is saying, which is kind of not very outside your process while still giving timely signals. David? Um, yeah, I, I under, understand and the concern about uh, staying within the process, et cetera. Um, it would have helped to have built that into a sense of um, timeliness at the beginning of this. It never occurred to me that we would not respond to the Speaker of the House or the President Pro Tem, for that matter, if that the leader was to write, um, and and not respond prior to the start of the session. And I'm sorry we've gotten all jammed up, but I, I think that uh, in terms of a show of respect between the branches of government, um, you know, if, we have some responsibility to be timely in our response. I'm going to end it there because I have the feeling this is going down to defeat any else, so. <laughs> Thanks, David. Okay, last set of comments. Anything you'd want to say or anything you'd like me to do to the agenda for next Monday to address these concerns we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes or so? Anything that should change on the agenda based on this? Kelly? Just a question in the chat is, do we have a Climate Council meeting on January 8th? Yeah, that's the that's the meaning that's, to do this. So, I mean, that, yeah, that's very quick after the, I, so I know, I know that the session is, will officially have started, but that's like, we're not waiting until this in-person one later in January. So right. I just wanted to make sure that that was still the case. Yeah, that is. And that meeting is precisely to do this final approval on these things that we said we need a second look at. Bram. Um, so in, to answer your question about changing the agenda, um, you know, I think what um, I'm understanding is that we should move, uh, you know, kind of our, our first item after convening and welcoming new counselors 
and maybe approving the agenda. Um, I mean, approving the minutes mm -hmm. should be biomass. And then that should be followed by transportation. And then that should be followed by resilience. I, you know, I think, I, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is we should decide on our kind of one, two, three, four priorities and arrange the agenda in that order. Um, and I think we have consensus on biomass being one and don't know about two and three and everything else. Okay, that's great. And so we could bump like the climate action office update, which is like our just transition reflection as well, lower down. That's fine. Yep. Any concerns with me doing that? Essentially going, cutting straight, straight into that substantive conversation of biomass and then scheduling up the transportation first look, then scheduling up the resilience first look. All good. Thumbs up from Kelly. Okay. I can do I, that. Yeah. I uh, would only just offer that the, we've had the resilience letter since like the end of July. Um, and I am worried deprioritizing that. I understand that uh, some have a real sense of urgency around the transportation recommendations. Frankly, um, I think to the, the earlier point about sort of our activity in this space being an indication of interest um, and what we're really asking for coming out of the transportation recommendations is currently drafted is, is funding for a study. I see that as a lower priority for the, the next agenda than trying to reach agreement on a response to the speaker. Right. Okay. And again, it's not like we're taking anything off the agenda. We're just putting him in order on the sort of worst case scenario that things get significantly delayed. Okay. So just so I'm doing the bidding of you all correctly, I'm seeing some interest in that order, Bram. Okay. Fantastic. That was what I want to check. Thanks, Bram. Okay. Great. Um, so let's do that. I will update the agenda to do that. I will also be clear on the start time of public comment uh, for the biomass. I'm not going to move public comment higher up for that second round. I'll leave that as sort of the last thing at the end of the meeting. Um, and what else? Uh, I think that's it for changes. Unless there's anything else you want me to do the agenda. Uh, David, quick comment. Yeah. Um, why would you move the uh, resilience comments to the end of the agenda if, in fact, we are going to try and move that? Should the stars align? No, I think what we're saying is biomass, then resilience, then transportation. But uh, what I'm asking is why not public reaction immediately after the resilience letter about the resilience letter so that the uh, council has a feel if they're that in fact the stars have aligned or that there are major problems. I mean, if there are major problems discovered and what we've put forward with that resilience response, then yeah, okay, I don't want us to go out there and embarrass ourselves as you all know. But um, if we can get even through the public comments, some sense of consensus about that letter, I sure would prefer it to go this month as opposed to next. I hear you, David. And what I'm hearing from the steering committee is they want to stick to the process of of uh, of having a two-step thing and, and doing the final decision on January 8th. I think that's what I'm hearing from the steering committee. And you can send, as a council, some pretty clear signals to legislature by the way you're talking about it and the way you're showing alignment on it, even if it's not a formal vote. Okay. And the letter will be a public doc. Yeah. Posted so we can, in fact, point the speaker towards that and say, hey, here's what we took a first look at. We're going to vote on it. But... It yeah, feels there feels like their support or you know whatever. So I think, right. uh, I, I think we can get the message to uh, the speaker that way. Yeah. 
Yep, you definitely could. Okay, other things that I do with the agenda, um, any other changes you'd like me to make to it? Okay. Um, anybody who's been joining our meeting who would like to make a comment, David's been doing that, uh, but other folks who aren't steering committee members who'd like to provide some input, this is a great time to do it. If you've been joining our meeting today. Okay. I'm not seeing interest in that. Um, that brings us to the end of this agenda. <laughs> Any last comments before we sign off? Anything else? Okay. Great. Thanks, everybody. Bram, if you and I want to connect on sort of how to efficiently present the biomass thing, just ping me and we can talk a little bit about that. Otherwise, I'll have that stuff ready to show on the screen um, as you wish. Great. Okay. Great. See you all. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. See you later.